Hi everyone, welcome to the first steps demo to get started with Local AC. Uh, I'm Marta Coloma and today we are joined by our lead, lead from developer Dan Harvat. Uh, hello Dan, how are you doing? Hello Marta, I'm doing great. Uh, so today we are going to go, to go through the following steps uh, to make sure that uh, you can start off in Local AC in a breezy manner. The first thing we will do is signing up, then we will create a project. And then we will be uploading our content, integrating our apps, and finally translating our content. And for that, we will go through uh, context. How can we create a glossary and how can we invite contributors? And finally, we will be downloading the results. So let's get started then. Yeah, let's get started. So before we can do any translations, we need to sign up. Uh, you can sign up with GitHub or uh, with Google or using the plain old method with email address. So we'll do just that. Let's call us ourselves Chendo as a email address, just you know, some random email address. Mm -hmm. And the password needs to be eight characters long, and that's it. Sure. Sign up. Okay. Uh, first, we ask you uh, what, which is the best role that describes you. In my case, that software developer. And my first goal uh, in localization is to start a new localization project. And I will call my workspace, as suggested, for instance, Lazy Corp Incorporated. OK. Right. Now, this is the project creation screen. Here you choose the project name, uh, which we can call just localized demo. And then you choose whether you want to uh, make your project private or public. Mm -hmm. The public project means that anybody can, you know, join on their own and start translating immediately. Mm -hmm. Whereas the private project means that the translators first need to be approved as contributors before mm -hmm. they can start making any translations. So we have like the crowdsource crowd option and the confidential option, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you have a like an open source project or you want to crowdsource the trans translations, the public project is the way to go. Mm -hmm. But I would say that for majority of users, the private project type is more appropriate. Great. Right. Then you choose your main language. In my case, it's going to be English. And then you can optionally opt in or opt out out of community translations, which are translation suggestions from other localized projects. Mm -hmm. Because some, you know, words or phrases such as cancel, continue, they have been translated thousands of times in other projects. Mm -hmm. And so we can share these translations and offer suggestions to you in an anonymous way. So you can make use of them and help you translate your project more quickly. Fantastic. So now right. we create the project. Okay. We create the project. How can we upload here... the content? Here, yeah, here you can, uh, you need to look for your uh, format type or framework you're using or whatnot. In my case, I have prepared a sample JSON file. So I look up a JSON format and select it. And you would quickly learn that most of the frameworks and most of the formats support similar integration methods, mm -hmm. where the command line interface is the most appropriate one for you know, long-term integrations and for automations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But for quick prototyping and, you know, trying out how localized it works, the direct file upload is the most appropriate. Mm -hmm. Besides that, you'll, you can also create source keys directly in Localizy, or you can use API to connect to Localizy. Good. Many options. Many options, yeah. As I said, for the prototyping uh, or, you know, Trying a localize the, the direct file upload is the easiest. Mm -hmm. You can leave most of the options or all of the options ideally untouched. In most cases, we are able to recognize the file type and we are also able to recognize the language of the file. Mm -hmm. In the second step, again, in most cases, you should be fine with defaults. And so let's hit upload. In just a few seconds, I've been able to upload my content to localize Okay, so everything is uploaded. How can we start translating and adding languages? Right, so we will start by adding our first language. Uh, let's say we'll add German, for instance. And there it is. 
We can mm -hmm. start working on translations, or we can first look at uh, context tools that are available. Okay, so uh, what is the glossary, for example? Can you show us? Right. So the glossary is a also called dictionary of terms, mm -hmm. and it serves as a place where you can define some terms or some phrases or brand names, you know, talk about their meaning and specify whether you want to translate them or not. And if you do want to translate them, you can even provide the recommended translation. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's very useful, for instance, for brand names. Uh, here in this first source key, you can see that it contains a word localizing, mm -hmm. which is you know, a brand name and it's something we don't want to translate. And so this is a good candidate candidate for a glossary term where you can describe it here. You can, you can say yeah, it's a brand name of the best translation management system ever. Mm -hmm. And we can say that it's case sensitive, so only localizing with this exact casing will be matched. Mm -hmm. And it's a word we don't want to translate into other languages. So we will keep this uh, unchecked. Take that. Okay. So we can save it and then it is applied to all of our translations. Yes, all the translators will see that mm -hmm. and they will have this extra uh, kind of information in order to provide the best quality translations possible. Speaking of the other translator, translators, how can we add contributors? That's a good point. Uh, so if you want others to have a look at localize or start doing these translations for you. You can navigate to this contributor section. And here you can see that there's only me at this point, mm -hmm. but I can provide a uh, unlimited number of additional contributors and mm -hmm. assign them one of the following roles. The translator role is the basic one and they only provide suggestions for the reviewer mm -hmm. while the trusted translators, their translations are immediately approved without the need for review. Mm -hmm. And the manager is a person who can you know, manage people in the project, add more, remove existing, change roles, etc. And the owner has access to everything that's available within a project. Good. So as I said, there is no limit on the number of contributors. Well, feel free to invite as many of them as you want. So now that we have the glossary and the contributors sorted, how can we start translating? Right. So let's translate German. Uh, you'll just start by hitting this translate button. And this is the translation interface. Mm -hmm. You can see the key you're translating. You can see the value value you're translating. And here you can also see that the localize term is highlighted, which is the glossary term we've defined a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And if I'll try to just provide a random translation, which doesn't contain the term, the glossary term, localize it, you will see a warning. And as I said, this is a great tool, how to make sure that the translators will provide translations of a quality that you are aiming for. Good, wonderful. So down there, right. we have different options to uh, from auto-translate from machine learning uh, sources. Uh, which are those? Can you explain them? Right. So yeah, below you have a contextual section and the first tab or the first part of this section is the suggestions, mm -hmm. which come from two sources. Uh, the suggestion come either from machine engines. Uh, in this case, you can see a preview from Amazon, mm -hmm. or they can also come from the uh, shared TM or community translations, which we allowed during the project creation. And you can actually see that this was already translated once in another project, but you'll see uh, in the next uh, within, on the next screen with, with the next phrase that the count is generally much much higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In this case, for you know the pair cancel in German, you can see it's been translated like that more than two thousand times already. Mm -hmm. And even if I didn't speak any German, I could still be quite confident that this is very likely a good translation sure. because it's been just used this many times. Mm -hmm. uh, so right. there are other options down there. Apart from Amazon, we have DeepL, Google, Microsoft. Uh, up to this point, everything was free. Are those included in another plan? That is, that is correct. Uh, so 
everything I've showed you up to this point is available in the free plan, mm -hmm. including the suggestions from Amazon. The additional suggestions from DeepL, Google, and Microsoft are available in one of the higher plans, mm -hmm. and we can take a closer look at it in next videos. Yeah, sure. Uh, right. So let's see how can we finish up our translation and then download it, right? Right. So let's just use Abbrechnen as a translation for cancel. And again, more than 700 uh, suge uh, suggestions as Vita. So probably a good translation as well. And hooray, hey. everything has been translated. Very quick and very easy. Very quick. And we have our progress bar fully green, which is always something you want to see. <laughs> So how can we download it? So uh, we've used a manual upload. So let's also download it manually via the web interface. And to do that, you would navigate to the file management uh, section within the tool section. Mm -hmm. And here is our file JSON file that we've uploaded. And on the right side, there's export and download button. And you can choose which languages you want to download. Mm -hmm. uh, I just care about the German translations in this case. So I'll just download that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, if I'll manage to look where it was downloaded here in downloads, you can see that my three strings there are indeed downloaded uh, and saved in German. There it is. That was a very easy and quick process. And if we have multiple languages, we can download everything at once, right? That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, there is no limitation on the number of languages. As long as you have uh, less than 200 source keys, you can try out everything for free okay. and see how localized it works quickly and efficiently for you. Yeah, this is a way, a great way to start off with the platform. And if you guys are interested, just let us know in the comments uh, if you have any questions, because we will be uh, making more demos about... Uh, right about all of the different possibilities you have to do have with local AC. You can connect projects, right. you can update uh, your projects as you go, uh, you can overwrite different strings. So uh, we will let you know in future videos and just uh, share with us uh, our, your concerns and we will just make sure to to show you in, in the next videos. So uh, for now, you can check a list of resources in the description box below. And thank you very much, Dan, for showing us how to use Local AC for the first time. Uh, I hope we see each other again in the next uh, demo videos. Yes, Marta, thank you. It was my pleasure and I can't wait to uh, record more videos with you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.